What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got some more ATN coverage for you and as I mentioned previously you're going to get to see a lot of ATN coming through because they're playing an ESL Meisterschaft which means they've got two matches every week as they get through the group stages. So today we're going to get to see them face off against the Dark Unicorns. Now at the time of this match both teams were standing 2-0 and in their group phase so this means one team walks away with a loss and this was an insanely close match. So if you want to see who got the win, who walked away undefeated, you'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button um, because liking videos does help the YouTubers really with the algorithm and getting those videos seen. And don't forget to head over to my Discord server where you can get weekly drops of bases courtesy of Blueprint Base Building and you can get some questions into ATN for our next monthly recap video. So without further ado, let's take a look into the ESLM week three match against Dark Unicorns. I am saved by the attacks. We've got Gabriel coming in, starting off this war. So I don't have to talk any more about accents. Thank goodness. Ooh, and I told you, I wanted to see the Frozen Witch attack. And this is exactly what we get to see. Coming in with a Zapquake to start it off. We've got the Log Launcher, and that is part of the strategy. Using the Super Giants to do the tanking here. So um, I was talking a little bit too much, but he did take down the Scattershot Chamber. So we do have another Scattershot on the opposite side. Now, we have a Town Hall that's like always left to the end of this because we bring in the Log Launcher, and it needs a nice, clean, long path down and through to get the most amount of value out of this log launcher here. So we've got a couple of witches straying on the outside edge of the base, which is perfect because they'll take care of the cleanup. We need the majority coming through, taking on the eagle, cutting through the core, past the multi-targeting inferno and scatter shot. Um, Warden's already used the ability here, but this is a good spot because this is where the scatter is coming in. Passage is like fully open here. And it looks like we're gonna get the rest of the walls open. Can we get some damage on the town hall and take it down ever so slightly? Ice Golems will come out to continue the push into this one. We do have the Royal Champion who's placed a little bit early because we didn't get as much value as we wanted to see from that three o'clock side. So we're gonna have to wait and see if this is gonna be a problem, but there are five freezes left over for this back end to help get through. Ice Golem's still coming for days to hold off this town hall, but he wants to wait just a little bit longer as we get the approach. Hold off that warden as the Ice Golems come in and do the tanking here. We still have to worry about the single targeting Inferno as well. And it looks like the Royal Champ is down for the count. So it's going to be up to the Queen to try and get this one done. She needs to stay behind everything so she doesn't have to burn through this ability. But the King has his ability as well. So he can be raged up, taking the lead and taking the brunt force of the defenses coming through. Witches trying to secure the Town Hall to go down. And it is going to be enough. Look at the investment of these freezes and how critical it is to help work this through. Keeping those for the very back end of the base to ensure you can get the Town Hall down. Down. King has already raged up. We've got that last remaining freeze held off for the single targeting Inferno. Queen's wrapping the corner here, going for the expo. We need her to walk inside this base. Warden is taking one for the team, holding off that single targeting Inferno. Freeze holds it off long enough. We've got the barbs coming through, distracting it so the Queen can come in and snipe it. And it's enough to get that taken down. 45 seconds left to go. Full wrap around the corner here. Giant bomb knocks out a few of the troops, but the queen still stands. King's still taking care of the cleanup work here. And it's that Tesla that remains. Archer's reaching over, taking care of it. And with that, we've got Gabrielle coming in and dropping down the three star. A great way to secure a nice position going into... Uh-oh. 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 Hold on. 15 seconds. Where are they? Let's go. Queen, get in there. You've got 12 seconds to move your booty up there. Come on, Warden. You can do it. Six seconds, two shots, and oh, it's safe. Unicorns are real. <laughs> Almost the jinx. Almost. <laughs> Let's see what Boom's got up his sleeve. I notice again that Boom's not taking the fourth spot to go in with his attack. Holy traps coming in the way, blocking this one off. But he does get the wizards in to the chamber that he wants to go. Uh, needs to take out the scatter shot here. Nicely placed giant bomb, which does do some nasty damage. Oop, last one's done. And 
Those super wizards are down for the count. But he still picked up some good value on this one. Queen doesn't go down. Scattershot doesn't go down. But that's all reachable value as the heroes work their way through. So that's not a big deal. Everything else that is unreachable for the queen is taken down. So Boom has a reasonable start here. We've got the Hound in a nice dark corner where the queen has no defenses targeting her. So it's a good spot to be in. Baby Dragon, to help with the funnel here, we want the king pulling, taking the lead, and actually working his way into that scatter shot chamber, which is why we see the placement exactly the way it is. But will we get the queen forced in, I think, is a question. Headhunter coming in to come for the assist against a defending AQ. Speed this up a little bit more and also spare some of the life of these heroes so we can get more value value on taking down defenses as we push our way across i am i'm looking at this and saying we want to get as far down as taking on this entire air defense chamber with a single targeting inferno and we've not yet dropped the royal champ king doing powerful work we've got the royal champ coming through to sneak across queen still has her ability on this one wall break opens up that chamber for her but i think the royal champ's actually going to make her way in drops the invisibility spell just to keep both of them safe through the single targeting inferno this is lovely and as they continue on their way he starts this lalo doesn't even worry about taking down that air defense we've got the hound to tank that's going to help with a little bit of uh pup action on the cleanup here Town Hall already activated, so we have to freeze it up. We've got the Ice Hound tanking from the opposite side. Warden hanging on patiently, working with the loons. His ability needs to be used here, getting into that Town Hall. Perfect timing, and ooh, some traps come up, but they're still in that Eternal Tome, so the loons are fine. That timing was beautiful. Freeze down, haste down, gonna sweep the loons across from this multi-targeting Inferno Chamber. We've got one more haste to sweep them into the back end, but it's not really needed. He does drop it just out of safety, because we've got 35 seconds on the clock, but we've still got the queen ability in this one. She's landlocked. Will help get through the king if it was an issue, but it's not. Loon's minion swarming around, and boom, drops down the three star in style with a swag queen ability. I mean, come on now. Absolutely stunning. Um, I, I was cracking up. As soon as I saw number four, I was like, I just did that this morning. <laughs> It was like such a perfect time. I swear you read my mind because every time I see your tweets, it's like something I've just done. Or maybe I read your mind. I don't know. So we've got Shazo coming in with, oh, they're coming in dirty spam style. We have got more frozen witch action. Zapquake again, sectioning off a good chunk of the space. We take down the eagle. That's huge. That is huge. This means it's not going to be there raining down on the witches. They have easier, safe passage coming through. Yes, we have the scatter shots to worry about, but they're all lined up in a nice position uh, through and through the space. However, I see he's coming in, waited a little bit more on the one side heading towards a town hall here now the log launcher again when we see this attack strategy the town hall is that last remaining thing so you need that backup plan of having freezes left over to help hold off the town hall and ensure you can finish a job here warden ability off early as we start approaching the scatter shot here and taking on a lot of damage coming from the core um, including the rays from that multi-targeting inferno these super giants doing excellent work tanking we still need to reach a scatter shot so we have the king and the royal champion working through king needs to force his way in and the royal champion is trying to help ensure that that happens uh, but the king goes for a walk so the royal champ, champ jumps over works her way in freezes up that scatter shot to ensure she can get the job done here and she will. King finally cuts across and works through with her. So we're in the core of this base. Ice golems are doing their work. They're holding everything off, but they are down for the count. So it's up to the freezes to help get this through. And the queen is actually here on perfect timing to get it taken down without having to force through on the ability. So the last remaining thing to worry about is the scatter shot. Um, because the single targeting Inferno at 12 o'clock is going down quick. It's gotten some damage done with a witch, so we need to see this all wrapping around the corner. We've got tons of time left over. A minute 15 on the clock here as a king, queen, um, warden, and witches all wrap their way around this base, coming down counterclockwise to work their way through that last final chamber. Now, yes, they're going to have to be through some walls to get in, in this, but They've got the power to get this done. And we've got three loons to help for some distract. Oh, hold on. We've got a super wall breaker to work our way into this. This is like Shazo might have planned that he would have to get into the back end of this base and work his way through. Come on now. That is thinking ahead. Opens up that wall. Easy peasy. Pushes through and comes in 
with the three star. I got to tell you, the unicorns are playing dirty with this dirty spam. And it is working for them. This is why we've seen the dark unicorns also going 2 and O. Oh, GG Shazo. And Westman and I already discussed this. <laughs> Lastman and I already discussed this. He's like, don't even pretend that you're rooting for me to win. He's like, it's me versus your boys. Because <laughs> he knows. He knows I'm always rooting for my boys. It's tough because I never want to see Wasman lose, but I don't want to see my boys lose either. So we've got Lenade coming through now with more Lalo. Spam versus Lalo. I like it. And sales at Blimp Across. We've got the Yeti Blimp coming in. Now, this takes on the Scattershot compartment, but it also helps uh, lure the Clan Castle troops. So this serves as double duty, which is really nice. He did invest a rage to ensure that he could get as much value as possible in that. And we've got the Queen uh, to carry on. Now, with the Queen charge, we've got the shape up of what we need to start seeing. She's got an easy push to help take on that air defense. And we want to take on the Scattershot chamber as well and start pushing our way through into the core of the base where we have that multi-targeting Inferno. We've got the Royal Champion and we've got a position where we're likely going to see all of those traps um, that would really devastate this push. So that wall break opens up the corner of the space, just giving it full access to get in and have the open wall compartment there. But you want to ensure that the queen goes in this next. Avi, thank you so much for the host. Welcome. Welcome, everybody coming over. Oh, is the queen not going to take it? Do we have enough funnel? <gasps> Queen's wrapping around the corner here. That wall break doesn't do her full justice, but it might open up the path that we need to get the queen to that multi-targeting inferno chamber. The queen doesn't need to go down, but the multi, the royal champ and some of those Teslas do need to go down so we can get the best passing possible. This King needs to force his ability. He needs to get through. Take on the eagle. So the queen sets her way in and takes on the scatter shot. She needs to be forced coming through. Has to invest a freeze to hold this off and get this queen continuing on. But she has taken some nasty firepower coming in from the eagle. He's got the wall break open. Queen has what she needs to work her way in. Let's hope that the archer towers don't distract her. It should be enough to get her coming through. But we have invested a lot of spells on this one. Freezes galore to give this queen every opportunity to take on that dirty, nasty core. Lynette is now working with just just about a minute left over to get this Lalo through. Had to start it. Has to start cleaning this up. But more importantly, has to work through, get to this town hall and shape up the path for the Lalo. More Teslas pop up. We are going to see some traps working their way as the loons get in. And come on now. Loons are like bypassing the town hall. Warden ability is off for the ones that are there. But it was way too early. So we are going to lose a ton of loons due to the Gigabomb. Oh, no loons left over. We've got Shazo coming in with a solid defense against Lenade, almost as if Shazo knew what ATN would come in with. That ATN loves to Lalo. This was a tough, tough go. I got to commend Lenade. For, turn, for trying to turn this one around. And he did everything he could to ensure that he got the two-star, that he got as much percentage as possible. But there was... Oh, it was Lenade against the world on this one, unfortunately. This was a tough go. 88% now could give uni Dark Unicorns what they need to clutch a lean? Possibly? Possibly? Let's see what Eve Timo has in store. Now, at this point, we've got the Dark Unicorns with a one-star lead. This is huge for them. Can they try and continue to secure the one-star lead by picking up another three-star? And I would say at least. Strong defense came in from Shazo. Let's see if Timo can capitalize off of this. We get the Yeti Blimp that comes in, and it does not take down the Eagle. It does lure the Clan Castle troops, but it doesn't get the full value he intended. He wanted this Eagle to go down, so he's going to have to slightly adjust for this one. King helping to navigate the path for the Queen sets up this funnel. 
and helps to tank as well for the scatter shot here. So that's a nice position for the king to be in. Queen is struggling a little bit. He's just going to need to see about investing a rage to keep her alive without having to force the ability early. We've got two super wall breakers to try and push this queen a little bit further in so she can take on the multi-targeting inferno. And actually, if she's in that multi-chamber, it's not too big of a deal because she's able to reach that eagle as well. So no biggie that he didn't get the full value that blimp helping to... Um, pretty much secure the pull, the lure of the clan castle troops while the queen's on the outside edge of the base. King is going the distance here, but he's not going to have enough to take on the town hall. Just a nice push to clear up most of the structures along the outside, taking care of some of those defenses there. We've got the wall break sneaking their way through and getting the car open for the queen, but she's already on track to actually push towards this town hall. Will we see her re-navigate and get inside the base, take on the eagle? Oh, we won't have to because it's a real champ that's coming in. She'll make some good work of trying to take on this eagle herself. No invisibility spell for her. Um, so she's going to have to do it single handedly. And she does. And the queen's in the position now to take on the multi-targeting Inferno and helps work through clearing out any possibility. Others loons pathing in for traps. Warden here hanging on to this ability. Perfect time now to get it off as the loons just set across for the town hall. They escape by completely unscathed. And I like this coming right out of that into a haste to sweep across into the back end where we have the scatter shot. Freezes it up quickly as it takes on the first shot of damage. Second freeze comes down to hold it off. And with a rage, they all converge here to the back end. That holding off that splash damage is absolutely huge. We've got 38 seconds left to go. Queen is still working, though. She's a little bit stuck inside this base. But Eve Timo has this, hands down, throwing in another three-star for the Dark Unicorns. Oh, my goodness. This means they are holding on to, at very least, a one-star lead against ATN in this match. Can they do the unthinkable? Can they do what they did not think they were going to be able to do and get the win over ATN? Uh, I love, but I love that um, people who put their channel points in for ATN are still rooting for the unicorns. It's a tough match. It's a tough match to decide who you want to win because we all know and love these guys. So asked, asked us to come in with a three star to just ensure that they don't spread that gap too far between them and the unicorns. We've got, oh, I need to zoom in on this. Hold on. We've got the Skelly Donut to come through, the invisible Skelly Donut, taking on the Clan Castle and the Scattershot. Beautiful value and drops that Quake there. Why? Because we want to loosen up some of the damage, um, some of the hit points, health points to that Eagle so we can quickly take it down. Royal Champ steering her way in with the assist of a wizard to actually keep the pathing moving through, take care of the cleanup as this moves along. We've got nice navigation here. He's waiting, timing the Seeking Shield to ensure that there are four defenses there so she can get target to the Eagle. And it launches off, but it doesn't make it across. Let's see if she has enough health to get through. There's no defenses that would necessarily target her before getting uh, the ground bows, the X bows. But that damage from the quake should just be enough to take it down. Oh, come on. Come on. It doesn't go down. It's up to the queen. Queen's got her ability. She can work her way through. She can take it on. All of that working together to try and pick up as much as possible in this one. Narrow out the path. We've got pretty much a nice straight line um, from the scatter shot all the way through to the town hall here. Loons starting making their way through straight towards that wizard tower. They're coming long way in. Why? Because we want to get them into the core. We want to pick up those possible traps. We actually do pick up that tornado trap. So that's a nice thing there. That queen picks it up at the end. Stone Slammer doing its job, soaking up all the traps in the core, opening up the dragon to take down the defending RC. We've got the Ice Hounds taking the lead here, tanking, and we'll see one pop and freeze up this multi-targeting Inferno. It's looking good so far. Freeze comes down to hold off the Royal Champ as the loons make their approach. Multi-targeting Inferno is frozen up from the Ice Hound. We've got the pops doing work. We've got one more Ice Hound to go. Oh, we needed to cut across. It's taking the damage from the Scattershot momentarily. Oh, no. It needs to move its way in. Haste down to try and sweep these loons in. It does get them safely into that safe spot. Oh, Ast has it. He's got it, hands down. And didn't even need that last ice hound to pop. 
36 seconds. Easy peasy. He pulls in the three star, but we still remain one star down behind the Dark Unicorns. So with two attacks left to go from the Dark Unicorns, is there going to be any possibility of ATN holding a defense? And mind you, it would need to be an 87% from the Dark Unicorns to get alternate attacks back into the lead. Oh, evil. Oh, evil coming in with the Inferno Drags. Okay. So this type of strategy is very overpowering we see it quite a bit but we've started seeing it we've seen more defenses coming through with this one paul thank you for the follow and we've even seen atn actually holding some defenses against this type of strategy in the world champ warm-ups so we get the king and queen pulling in taking on the town hall and shaping up the path that we want to see for these inferno drags i like that he's going in with a base that only has one multi-targeting inferno makes it a lot safer of an approach to come through Valk on the outside edge, taking care of cleanup. And we're looking to help with the navigation on the back end. I like this position here from the six o'clock side, taking on some loons. So we don't see the Inferno Dragon straying too far. He's already used the heroes, so we don't have too much coming in. And it helps to pick up any possible traps along the way as that blimp sails through into the Eagle Chamber. This is all allowing the Inferno Drags to push through into the core of the base where the multi remains all for the shape up of the path to the back end. <clears throat> now, problem is, is that we've got the Inferno Drag struggling a bit. Not everything's staying in line in the core of the base. We do have the Skellies trying to do as much work as possible to distract this, but a ton of traps trying to knock these Inferno Drags down. Can we get them back in to the core to help finish the job here? We do have the Royal Champ and we've got one freeze spell. That freeze spell needs to be used ideally for the back end single. And with the multi-targeting Inferno down, now, yes, it can be. Oh, but his Royal Champ goes down. Defending RC helps to hold this slightly, even though she's down for the count. But is there going to be enough out of these Inferno drags to take this on? Single targeting Inferno isn't too much of a concern for these Inferno drags. But the traps, the splash damage, those wizard towers, and the air defense are. And that airbow let's be honest and that's enough to knock this one down and give atn the percent they need to try and bring this around through this is a tough one for the dark unicorns that were going so strong in this this percent knocks them out of a possible position of getting the win today if atn pick up the three star we have to wait and see we have a little bit more percentage to go, but we know it's not going to be long lived considering the Archer Tower um, will be in line to pick off this minion as it approaches the canyon or the cannon. 82% is all we're going to be left at for the Dark Unicorns. We are talking about a 6% differential. What do we have left on the board here? One, one lonely skelly trying look at it look at him go look at him go he's trying but 82 is all we have so six percent difference now if atn pick up the three star this is getting good Ooh. okay so vala our mvp takes the fourth spot which is um been showing to be the position that has the lowest hit rate so I like the strategy that they're bringing in Vala um, because I think he can easily adjust, but we'll have to see. I don't want to jinx that. I don't want to jinx that. Coming in with the Zapquake Lalo, we do not have the Log Launcher, sadly. No Vala Log Launcher Lalo, but we've got the Zapquake. We take out the core. Does he miss them? No. Come on. <laughs> He misses the multi. Oh, the fourth spot is the jinxed curse spot. Come on. Oh, multi remains in the core. This, oh, we've seen him fix it before. Can he fix it now? This is a tough go. That means the loons are going to have to path in there. Oh, we still have the headhunters alive. We still have, we have a poison. There we go. Poison down. GG. 
the stone slammer is doing work for days and it needs to get into that multi-chamber. It needs to push its way into the core because it needs to absorb the traps in there. It needs to soak up those traps. Oh, but it's down for the count. He sends in a couple of loons because he knows primarily we should see some of the pathing moving out and around. Oh, Hound comes out. I'm assuming due to a headhunter that comes through and through. So this could also be a problem on the back end. We get the multi down. It just needed like one or two loons in there. Loons still have safe passage coming in and we've got reinforcement. Another fresh hound for the back end with more loons. Haste comes down. We've got the Royal Champ who was spared for the back end to help with that single, uh, the scatter shot. Oh, and he's fine. He's fine. Oh, Royal Champ, are you really? Are you really messing about with the hound? He's fine. I'm still going to say he's fine. We've got the dragon taking care of the storage up top. Minions taking care of the storage up top. Yes, the real champ has to contend with the hounds, but she makes quick work of it. We've got the minions to swarm through, take care of the rest of the cleanup. And we've got 45 seconds left to take care of the bottom side of the base. Vala really handled that one well, considering he missed the, <laughs> the lightning spell. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I really do think that it's the fourth the fourth spot the curse of the fourth spot but he recovered and that is all that matters so we are tied up but it's atn that holds a six percent lead now can both of these teams pull in three stars keep it closer or will we see one of these last two hitters wasman and yo-yo crumble to the pressure Okay, wa whoa, whoa, Wasman not coming in with the dirty witch spam? Coming in with the drag bat. Okay, okay, Wasman. So he starts off with a couple of archers. Nice placement here too, because notice we've got the archers just in that safe zone of the mortars, so that's huge value. Takes on early cleanup, helps shape up the pathing and looking good. Ooh, lovely, comes in with the zap. Royal champ combo to work her through and help knock off the 12 o'clock chamber here. Unfortunately, we don't get that air bow down. It's hanging on by a thread, but I don't think that will be too problematic for the pathing. King on the outer edge might see a little, we might need to see like a little bit of backtrack or just one stray dragon to work through and take that on would be fine. So we got the king down, helping shape this up, tanking for the queen as she works along the outer edge, reaching over those walls that he can't reach. Dragons pathing through the core, exactly what we want to see. Now, it would be nice to have the queen actually working in, taking on that scattershot compartment and forcing the dragons further into the center of the base. King does ensure that she does that. And this is exactly what we get to see. Forces that queen ability. And don't forget, we still have the bats to come in. Oh, and this blimp to take on the scattershot chamber. So this takes out two huge splash damage components, the wizard tower and the scattershot. Now we just have two wizard towers on the back end remaining that we have to worry about. Three freezes left to help hold this off. It would be nice if we could get a few more dragons to come through, but hold up. We've got the ice golem to actually start the tanking here and refocuses that bow to keep everything safely through. This is a lovely timing on the ice uh, the ice golem because he froze up that entire wizard tower long enough that he doesn't need to use his last freeze. Oh, Wasman, how you've mastered your spam. Dropping in the three star under pressure, knowing that your phone could die any second and you swag a freeze. I know these guys were expecting to have their cheeks clapped, but they've been doing some clapping as well. With that, Wasman throws down a lovely ending to the War for the Dark Unicorns. 14 stars up against the world champions, ATN. But is that 6% difference going to do them in? Or can they hold a defense on their final attack and come through and say they beat the champs? But it's a 6% difference, and that is huge to go up against a team like this. So congrats, Dark Unicorns. No matter how this turns out, congratulations. Let's see. Pressure's on Yo-Yo now to drop the three-star. He has to if ATN want to see the win and go perfect in their group, go 3-0. and He needs to pick up the three-star. If he doesn't, then the Dark Unicorns actually hold that record. They will hold a 3-0 and record. 
So we've got the queen starting off, uh, lining up to get set for her charge. I noticed that we have one lightning spell and one quake. So we'll see a little bit of an RC trick. Curious to see if it's going to come in from the scattershot chamber uh, at the 12 o'clock side. Um, or maybe the, actually the, the bottom single targeting inferno, possibly. Uh, Asterisk, thank you for the follow. Queen's got her wall break open. King ensuring that she gets forced inside the space he works that funnel to push her into the town hall chamber freezes up that single targeting inferno keeping that queen nice and safe we've got the coco uh loon to come in Ooh, ooh, perfect timing on that because it just picks up that black bomb next wall break comes in and we've got another one after this going straight for the core of the base where we can take on that eagle artillery has yet to drop the Zapquake and the Royal Champ yet. We have not gone that far to take this out as a king uh, struggles against the defending king and Royal Champ. So the queen's going to have to take some of this on. Do we have headhunters to help work this through? Yes, we do. Headhunters come in, make quick work. But the queen's already forced her ability. That's fine because she's not going to come into contention with uh, the scatter shot, especially if he drops the stone slammer good timing on that we've got the royal champ to sail her way nice underneath and through this is actually going to help quite a bit because the loons can take on all that air targeting defense as the royal champ sits back through and through queen unfortunately not doing excellent work here she's beating on a wall that she shouldn't be beating on when she can easily go for the eagle the other way finally does make her way through but it doesn't matter. Warden can use his ability here. And it's good timing because we've got the eagle firing away on the loons, keeping them safely through. Here comes our Zapquake. And yes, indeed, it does come for that back end scatter shot. I wasn't sure which direction he was going to use it. But because he started this royal champ working through everything, he can use that. So he can launch a seeking shield. But he doesn't even need to. We've got the stone slammer still working through. We've got a good amount of loons. And we've got a freeze to help hold this off. Where did that royal champ go? Where did she even go? Not sure what happened to her, but we don't need her because the loons are good enough. Oh, there she is. Hello. You're finally there. The loons have what it takes to finish a job here. And Yo-Yo doesn't care about pressure. He can still three star, throw down a three star any day and bring home the win for ATN. <sighs> what a well fought match. What a beauty of a match to see ATN and the Dark Unicorns tying up 14 to 14 and only a 6% difference for the Unicorns. This is why these two teams are were 2-0 going into this match. Now we have ATN 3-0 holding, holding an undefeated position in their group. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this incredible war. And if you want to see more of these wars and you want to catch them live, cheer on your favorite teams, hang out with us in chat and have a way to actually win some rewards. You earn channel points while watching live streams and you can win gold passes, subs, tons of stuff, including something I'm going to add in merch. So you just have to head down to the description below and follow me over on Twitch. And that's about it. Until next time, this is Lady V. I'll catch you guys later.